Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to patch a lookup column in Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I'm going to show you how to patch a lookup column in Power Apps. So just to start, I'm going to show you my SharePoint list that I'm working with. I'm working with a contractor list. So for my use case, I'm going to have a bunch of contractors that I hired, and I'm going to pay them each a wage. And depending on their job grade, that determines their wage. So job grade one corresponds to 70,000, job grade two, 82,000, and so on. So if I want to easily change the salary for job grade two, because I have two employees there, let me go ahead and change uh, Emma's job grade to two. So having a lookup column on these two, it automatically changes the salary. So I have all of the salaries in my contractor salary list. So this is a separate SharePoint list. And each one has an ID. This is automatically assigned when you create a new item. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I have the job grade rank. So these are out of order, but each rank corresponds to a salary. So job rank two corresponds a 2000. So when I want to change a salary for all the employees, I don't have to go in and each one of these manually change the salary. I just go into here and change the salary here and it'll correspond to the contractor list. So we want to do this in the Power App. So I will go ahead and create a data table. First of all, make sure your data is connected to your Power App. So all my SharePoint lists are in my Power App. So I'm using a data table because it is the easiest to show this example. If you want to use a gallery, you can do that as well. So for my data table, I'm going to use a contractor list because that is where all my contractors are stored. So here we go. So I don't really need all these fields. So I will go ahead and use the remove the fields that I'm not using, which is the title field and the attachments field. Okay. So we have all of our job grades right here. We have all the corresponding salaries. I don't really like how this text for the job grade looks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that using a split statement. So I'm going to use first split, double quotes, period. And then I wanna grab the first value of that. So basically what the split statement does is it's going to split that string into two at the period delimiter. So it's going to take whatever's before the period since I used the first one and I'll put that if I did last, it's going to put all those zeros because it's split on the period. So we'll go ahead and do first again. Okay. So when I select something in this list, it actually stores that data. So if I go ahead and create a label here and do data table two dot selected dot first name, it will get me whoever I select right here. So let's go ahead and create a label right here. And let's say I want to change the job grade of Emma or wherever I select. This is just going to be a label and I want to do the other one in a combo box. So this is going to be when they select the job grade. So I need to get all of the job grades available in my SharePoint list. I'll go back to my contractor salary list. This is, this column is called job grade rank, but I renamed it after I created it. So if I go into the list settings, I click on job grade rank and I look at the URL I can see that it's actually called master ID. So that's what the Power App's gonna call that. So for my combo box items, I wanna do distinct. So the data source is contractor, salary list, and then I wanna do a distinct on the master ID. And now we have all the master IDs. 
I actually want to sort this based on the value. So now they are all in order. And the reason I had to do distinct here is because this type column type I'm using for my master ID is actually a number. If you did a choice column, it would look something like this. So let's say my master ID was a choice column. You want to do choices, contractor, salary list, dot, master ID. But since it's not a choice field, that won't work. So we have to do a distinct. So next, we just want to create a button. So when I click on the button, it's going to patch whoever I select in my data table and go ahead and change their job grade. First, let's actually assign a default selected items to this combo box. And that is going to be whatever I selected in my data table. Table table two dot selected dot job grade. And whenever I change this job grade, it changes whatever is in my combo box. And I'm going to go ahead and do that split statement again because I don't like looking at all the decimal places. We're just going to do first split job grade. Okay, so this is the statement I'm going to be using. I'm grabbing the first value of the job grade. And I'm going to actually turn off allow multiple selections because I only want the user to select one job grade. So if I want to change the job grade for Michael Alex, let's say he got promoted to job rank six. I want this button to change that in my SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and start writing the code for this. It's going to be patch. And the source is going to be my contractor list. The record I am going to be using, I'm grabbing that from my data table. So table, data table two dot selected. I'm just going to close up the brackets. So this lookup column is called job grade. So let's go ahead and do job grade here. Now, when I patch a lookup column, I need to put it in brackets and I need an ID and a value associated with each of them. So I find that ID and value right here in my contractor salary list. I have an ID here that SharePoint automatically creates and I have a job grade rank. My job grade rank is always going to be a unique ID there's not going to be two threes in my job grade rank. There's only going to be one. So I need to patch the ID and the value of these two to be able to patch the lookup column in here. And to get that, it's going to be, we'll do the value first down here. I just want whatever's in my combo box two dot selected dot value. So that value is actually six. Now for the ID, I want to go ahead and do a lookup. We're going to look up on the contractor salary list. I want to do master ID is equal to my combo box two dot selected dot value. And when that is found, I want to return the ID. So basically, I'm just going to go over this again. When I patch my contractor list with a new job grade grade rank, so I'm changing Michael from one to six. So his current job grade is one. I'm going to change this to job grade six. And job grade six is associated with ID number four and salary of 100,000. So I'm patching the data table two dot selected record, which is Michael Alex. I have the job grade, that's the column name I'm patching. I have in brackets the ID that I'm looking for, which is ID number four. And the value I want associated with this is job grade rank six. So it should be four and six. The value one's easy because I'm just patching whatever I have in my combo box right here, which is six. The ID is a little more difficult because I need to look up the contractor salary list, which is this list. I want the master ID, which is my job grade rank, which is six to equal my combo box selected dot value, which is six. So six equals six, and then it's going to return four, because that is in my return field right here for the lookup function. So 
when I go ahead and click on this button, I'll just add a notify to this so we know that the job grade was actually updated. If I do six, we can see the job grade rank actually changed here and now he has 100,000. Let's go to Bobby. His current job grade rank is two. I switch it to three. And that updates. I'll switch Jessica's to one. Now it's associated with 70,000. I'll switch Janet to five. She's now 90,000. I'll switch Emma to six. And that's now 100,000. So I'll just leave the code up on the screen right now. This code is a little more difficult to follow. Lookup columns are more difficult field to patch than the other ones. The other ones usually don't require an ID and value. When you're working with lookup columns, I just recommend thinking about it. Um, looking at your list, actually understanding which IDs you need for the ID and value fields. But I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, if you like it, leave a comment and a like. If you really liked it, you can subscribe to me. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. And I will catch you in the next one.